My name is Jeremy Devins, and this is the Quiet Mind Astrology Podcast. This is the monthly horoscope for April 2024. And if you want to know how this affects you personally and people close to you, get your free birth chart at quietmindastrology.com. There's a chart calculator there. You can also look up people close to you and listen to the rising and moon sign for yourself and the people close to you to understand what's going on this month, what energies are shifting and how you can best work with it. And of course, if you want to go deeper into understanding how to work with energy for yourself and others, then I'll have this really cool offering coming up next week from when I'm posting this on Saturday, April 6th. It's called Deepen Your Practice. It's about the path to mastery of yoga and Ayurveda, which are the sister sciences of Jyotish or Vedic astrology. So you can sign up for free. It's a free live workshop on Saturday, April 6th. If you can't join, you can get the free replay. And I'm going to be sharing this path, the three-step path to mastery of these skills, which I think are so essential and really the foundation of doing astrology is having this awareness of energy and attention and intention in yourself. And yoga and Ayurveda are the best ways that I know of to do that. So check that out at the link in the show notes or at quietmind.yoga slash deepen your practice. So here's the Quiet Mind Astrology forecast for April. We have eight significant transits coming up this month. So let's look at what's happening for everyone and how you can best work with these general energies. Then I'll go into the sign-by-sign interpretations. So first of all, we have Mercury going retrograde from Ashwini Nakshatra back to Revati Nakshatra from Aries to Pisces. For the sort of shadow period, the whole energy of the retrograde is not just three weeks but it's kind of around five weeks the week before the three weeks of the retrograde and the week after and this is a time where there's a lot of opportunities for reflection and reassessment of your goals and your plans so mercury in aries as it's going to be briefly and then it will come back it's about thinking forward moving forward creating new things and new ideas but when it goes back to pisces now we're back into mercury being debilitated But this is not necessarily bad. It just means that we've got to explore our dreams, our fantasies, our ideals, our visions. And things like astrology are wonderful for this. Going back to old things that you've wanted to do in the past are wonderful for this. If you've got some piled up papers, unfinished things, even like taxes, Mercury is representing business, commerce, and the logical mind. So if you haven't finished your taxes in the U.S., uh, I know other countries have different things, but in the U.S. they're usually due in April. So a good time to go back over your taxes, but you may need to redo those things. And we'll talk about you know, some of the challenges of this as well in a moment. It's so a time for reinvesting or in revisiting past decisions and gaining new insights. So maybe there's something you started a year ago when Mercury was last around this area of the sky that you want to come back to or bring closure to. Or maybe there are some projects that you've started over the past few months since Mercury was last retrograde that need some more attention to go back over. Any of the RE words are favorable at this time, reviewing, reflecting, revising. And then of course, in yoga practice, restorative yoga is one of the best things you can do at this time to let all the shaking up of the mind settle so you can recenter and get clarity increased focus on spiritual and intuitive aspects of your communication while Mercury is going back through Pisces. And this is a good time to go back to any sort of spiritual practices, spiritual texts, or spiritual insights that you're curious about, or maybe a spiritual path that you've been on. Meditation and mantra and pranayama are also very favorable. There's a potential for misunderstandings, delays, or miscommunications. Of course, anytime Mercury is retrograde, So you want to dot all your T's and cross all your I's and then go back and realize you need to actually dot your I's and cross your T's. And this can happen and it can be great miscommunications. Not the best time to buy new technology, new phones, new computers. I've tested this many times. I don't recommend unless you like to make life a little more challenging for yourself, then enjoy. Have at it. But usually technological things have some delays and setbacks that are unforeseen during this time. But it usually is not too big of a deal. You know, if you're doing practices, if you're doing breath work, meditation, or some sort of self-awareness practice, these things go better. 
And if you're doing something of service, that also helps a lot. As my teacher would talk a lot about just service and yoga practices are the best way to express and even burn through, you could say, karma. And there is the maybe negative karma and consequences of past actions in this lifetime or maybe even previous lifetimes. I don't know. But this is energy that needs to be expressed and moved. And when Mercury's in Pisces, now there's energy to be expressed and moved in this way, the positive possible ways. But if there's unresolved stuff, they need to be addressed. And if you're doing practices, that helps a lot. But you may need to rehash some communication issues, rehash a contract, negotiations, these kind of things while it's here through the beginning of April, mostly to the end. And we'll talk about that when it goes direct at the end of the month as well. Next significant transit is also a big one, is on Monday, April 8th. There's the new moon slash solar eclipse in Pisces and Revati Nakshatra. And of course, the eclipse seasons happen twice a year, roughly. And this is roughly every six months. And we just had the lunar eclipse recently. You can go back to the episode on that and hear about that big transition that you're going through there in the Hasta Nakshatra. Now, the opposite of that is Revati. Revati is this accumulation of wisdom and knowledge and experience and the sun is momentarily overshadowed by the moon from our perspective on earth and then uncovered and it's like we have this sort of changing of the acts in a story you know like in the second act of a movie if you understand storytelling or you follow this you may have noticed this a lot of times in movies at the end of act one there's a scene where like the person falls asleep or the main character falls asleep and now they wake up and now they're in this new phase of life. Or often in the movie, it'll just like fade to black and now fade into act two. And it's kind of like this with the solar eclipse where the sun is overshadowed, the light. The Jyotish is the science of light. We're studying how light and energy moves through the universe. So the light is momentarily overly sh overshadowed and our clarity, our creativity, our power, our authority is momentarily fading to black and then fading in on the next scene of life and setting the stage for the next six months until the next eclipse, where some of the themes that we're all looking at, and I'll do the sign by sign for this, so we'll go deeper on this soon, but it's an ideal for setting new vision related to creativity, learning, and spirituality, where you want to accumulate wisdom and knowledge and your new direction to go in this direction. And it's auspicious for major insights, for self-compassion, and a new level of intuitive guidance. So on this particular day, Monday, April 8th, don't do anything that requires very important decision-making, like signing a contract or things like this. Maybe if they've been in motion, go for it. But I would recommend, generally best practice is do spiritual things, maybe studying astrology, studying yourself, meditation, yoga practice, receiving uh, massage, body work, self-care, these kind of things that are more therapeutic, gentle, just sleeping in, just taking a nap if you can. And, and nothing too, too strenuous or too taxing mentally, physically, spiritually. And in that space, you can have major insights and major intuitive awareness. And I don't recommend looking at the eclipse, even in pictures online. I'm maybe a little superstitious about this. But if you actually look with your naked eye in real life, it's not good for your eyes. And you have to, it's ideal that you get special glasses. So that's the non-superstitious side of it. But in the old Vedic text, they do say that essentially the people who look at the eclipse lose their mind. <laughs> and you don't see clearly and you don't perceive clearly. And maybe partially part of that is the actual uh, effect on your eyes from looking at it. But I think also part of it is just the energy of it. It's like closing the act, like fading to black, like the scene in a movie. It, it's, it needs to, there needs to be this sort of momentary pause, and now we move into the next phase of life. And I think there's a lot of benefit to just going with that energy, not fighting it, and do which, what feels right for you. Try it out. I test all these things myself. So everything I'm saying is from my experience and doing this for a long time, like 18 years now. So I recommend that you do what is aligned for you. Try what I say. If it doesn't work, discard it. If it does work, keep using it. It's a time of surrender, releasing, letting go of old patterns, and creating space for renewal. 
So again, that sort of fading to black, fading in on the next scene of your life in Revity, where you're moving towards this new vision of what you want to create in your life. And I'll go more detail for the signs in the next upcoming episode. So more details to come on like what this means for you, because it is very personal to each sign and what house it's in for you and all the other stuff. But overall, it's a time of letting go, releasing, donating, selling, throwing away things that don't align anymore changing your lifestyle changing your way of being if there's something that's really not serving you anymore it's like why are you still doing it life is so fast it just goes by so fast and why do things that are not aligned why do things that don't light you up and the sun is about what lights you up your creativity your expression your soul essence and when we have this solar eclipse it's like okay let's just wipe the slate clean for a moment and let's look at your life from a new perspective again. We've had this establishment of the last six months of where you've been at, what you've been going through. Now, where do you want to move towards? And Revity is about moving towards this more spiritual element of ourselves and less focused on the material. Now, there's possible emotional intensity or sensitivity at this time, so just kind of lay low, chill out, and if there's like important conversations to have or negotiations or conflicts to resolve, not the day to do it. I do not recommend it. And if you want to test it out for yourself, go for it. And I think that's really the best teacher's experience. So, so see what happens for you. Notice what your, your day is like on April 8th and what you do and how that impacts you. And if you want to try, you know, try some of the things I suggest and see how they impact you. And on Tuesday, April 9th, the next big transit, of course, Mercury retrograde back to Pisces. So we talked about this last month. You can check in on that again. Mercury and Pisces gets a bad rep, but I think it's pretty nice. I actually have it in my chart. And a lot of people who use their mind in a sort of imaginative, creative way or into spirituality have this placement as well. So it's not something to worry about too much. I know there are great astrologers who have this, uh, spiritual teachers, channels, mediums, people who are very intuitive have this. So it's, it can bring some difficulty in communication and miscommunications. And I did struggle with this a lot earlier in life and shyness. But when we all have it by transit like this, it's a time where we can be more intuitive and empathic in our communication style, where you might find new creative intuitive insights as well. The time where there's increased receptivity to emotional nuances and subtleties. And you may find yourself more open to new ways of thinking about things and picking up on energies that you didn't know were there. It's great influence for creativity and imaginative thinking. If you're in any sort of creative work, great. There's a potential for confusion or indecision in your communication. So if there is some big decision to be made, Mercury is always like, I could do this, I could do that. Revity is two fish swimming in opposite directions. It's like, let's go with the flow. What about this? What about that? So this could be a time throughout April where you're just like too much going with the flow and you need to go back over things with it being retrograde where you weren't clear and direct and you may face some of the consequences of that and needing to be more clear and direct of yes go with the flow follow the way of things the natural order of things but there needs to be some level of more decisiveness which will be much supported in the middle of the month when sun goes to aries as i'll say in just a moment so saturday april 13th the sun moves into aries surya in the sign where it's exalted where it's at its strongest is the energetic and courageous kind of energy that can bring this approach into challenges and opportunities where now from the middle of April, you may feel inspired to take action, to get things done, to start projects. It's a favorable time for taking initiative and insert, asserting yourself and saying, this is what I stand for, this is what I want, putting a stake in the ground. And literally, that could be a really powerful thing. It's like, this is who I am, this is what I want, this is what I'm moving towards, and actually physically getting a big stick and putting it in the ground. Uh, I would recommend if you feel like there's something you need to really stand for it. There's a positive influence on individual goals and personal growth. Aries is the self, the natural indicator of the first house of self. And the goal of the sun is essentially everything revolves around it. So it's an indicator of like CEOs, managers, leaders, entrepreneurs, and people who are at the center of important decisions. 
And these people are often leading others, like the sun is essentially leading the other planets, including Earth. And it is this sort of beacon of light that everyone looks to. And a goal is something you look to, a target, an aim, a direction. So this is a great time for a month, April 13th until mid-May, to be clear on what you want to create, what do you want to move towards. It's a very strong, almost unstoppable energy. Really powerful for starting, getting things done, moving things forward. Where, in what way? Well, we'll talk about that in the sign-by-sign stuff later in this episode. There's a potential for impulsiveness or conflicts arising from being overly assertive and aggressive, arrogance even. Be aware of that. Maybe pushing yourself too much. Oh, I'm going to wake up at 5 a.m. I'm going to do this, this, and this. And then three days later, you're burned out. (laughs) So there's that potential for burnout, hubris, uh, flying too high and burning your wings, the Icarus mythology. This could happen with Sun and Aries. So being aware of that allows you to be a little more tempered in your choices. Maybe you wake up at 30 minutes earlier rather than three hours earlier. Maybe you take on one new goal and see it through rather than five new goals. There's a potential for starting a lot of things and not finishing them. This is a great energy for starting. The Brahma energy of the three-headed gods, of Brahma, Vishnu, and Shiva. So Brahma is the creator. That's a lot of this energy. But then you need Vishnu energy to sustain it, which is like Jupiter and Taurus coming in May. That's nice. And then there's uh, the destructive energy, of course, to wipe that slate clean and start over, which is like the eclipses. Okay, clear this away. Or 12th house transits and let this go. So some people will be having some big 12th house transits this month, uh, especially the Aries and Taurus ascendants and moons. Now, next big transit of April is on April 22nd. Mars moves into Pisces. This means no more of the Saturn-Mars conjunction, which is like this rush hour kind of energy. It's like, let's go, but we can't. There's too much traffic. I want to get here, but I'm delayed. Mars wants to take action, move forward. Saturn wants to slow things down. <clears throat> Saturn is considered debilitated when it's in Aries, when it's in, ruled by Mars. Uh, and that can bring a lot of delays throughout life if you have that in your chart. But it also can teach us patience. It can teach us to look at the big picture and to know that this too will pass. But sometimes you need to endure some challenging things. And Saturn and Mars, for the last month and a half or so, has been teaching us these lessons of patience and endurance and sustaining through the challenging things. But now Mars moves into Pisces on April 22nd. This is a great place for Mars to be. It does well here, and it's an energetic and determined pursuit of spiritual and creative goals. Mars action, Pisces, the vision. It's assertive actions with a compassionate and empathetic, empathetic approach where there's also this uh, warrior energy who's emotionally attuned of Pisces is tuning into the energies, the subtleties, the intuition. So it's really powerful to have this Mars plus the action, the warrior, plus the intuition. So you may find yourself more creative, more inspired, more active from April 22nd on, where you may have felt more delayed and blocked before this. There's increased passion and drive in service-oriented endeavors. Pisces has this benefic, generous, giving kind of energy. Saturn has a service orientation as well, so you may have felt some of this as well, and this desire to serve and help, but the the delay, the friction has been kind of blocking that. But now with Pisces energy and the Mars being ruled by Jupiter, and Jupiter and Aries, so there's a sign exchange for Mars and Jupiter in this time, uh, just for a couple weeks here. It's not, uh, ideally this would be longer, but this is just a couple weeks. So the sign exchange, that's a Parivartana yoga, is very positive. And, uh, there's a sign exchange. So Mars ruled by Jupiter, Jupiter ruled by Mars, meaning there's more hopefulness, more optimism, more ability to take action and see the big picture and make progress and say, this is how you want to expand and grow and this is how you can do it. And there's a lot of passion to do that in a way that's of service to others. Now there's potential for impatience or conflicts from being too idealistic, impractical, that Jupiter energy can be like, I could do this, I could do that. And then the Sun and Aries also with this. So now the Sun is being ruled by Jupiter, 
where there can be this arrogance, hubris, too much, uh, oh, I could do this, I could do that, what about this? Taking on too many projects, thinking too big outside of your comfort zone. And life in a lot of ways, I think, you know, I, I grew up playing video games, so I think of this, and there's like this stage of, in this first stage of a video game, you have limited skills, but that's all you need for that level. And then you learn a new skill in the next level, and in the next level, and then as you keep going, you need to use all these skills and this awareness that you've used in more challenging ways. But if you jump from the first level to the 10th level, and that's the kind of energy that could happen in the middle of April to like late April, it's like uh, more lifelike examples. Like you jump from meeting somebody to wanting to marry them. You've just skipped a lot of levels of growth. Or you get into a new job and then you want to just jump into being the manager. You just skipped a lot of levels of growth and you're going to be in over your head and you're going to take on more than you can handle. Or like uh, for me, I want to learn to surf, so I have almost no skill in surfing. So if you just throw me in the middle of the ocean, that's too many jumps in the levels and I'm not ready for that and it's not safe and it's dangerous. So we don't want to jump too far ahead with this energy into a level we're not ready for because then we'll, of course, uh, something bad could happen, it's dangerous. So we want to kind of work at the level we're at and then lean into that edge of what is the next level? Just like the one next step. You go from like meeting somebody to maybe going out for coffee with them rather than jumping into the marriage. And then you go out to coffee and then maybe you go on an, a, a lunch date, you know, another date. And you go like further and further along step by step in a way that makes sense rather than jumping from shallow to deep end and drowning. So that's an important energy to be aware of this month of now getting out of that grinding blocked energy of Saturn Mars conjunctions and now this, whoa, what, what's possible? I can do so much. It's so exciting, so energizing. And then we have the full moon in Swati in Libra, which brings a nice balance to all this the next day on April 23rd. Swati and Libra, of course, all about bringing balance to our lives. And the full moon, this time of culmination and completion towards the end of April. It's a culmination in efforts and relationships and collaborations of ways you've worked with others, and now you bring the sense of completion to that. It's a positive energy for finding balance and harmony in your partnerships. Swati is a very peacemaking, balance, harmony-finding energy. It's a time of heightened awareness and clarity in your social interactions. There's a potential for emotional intensity or heightened sensitivity on the full moons. You may have experienced this. I've seen this so many times. I go out on the full moon and it's just like more traffic, more chaos, more of this ungrounded kind of energy, a lot of stuff moving around, more lights and noise. And even in, in nature, like more animals out hunting, dogs will go out hunting later because they have more moonlight to see things, more creatures are out. So it's this little bit ungrounded energy on the full moon where I generally recommend kind of chilling out, laying low, or maybe you go to some intentional sort of celebration where you can dance and move that energy through your body. You know what's best for you. Sometimes it's like energy needs to move. Sometimes it needs to be grounded. And this is why I practice and teach yoga and Ayurveda. It's all about awareness of energy and knowing like today I need more grounding, grounding foods, grounding lifestyle. And maybe today I need more expression, energizing, moving energy, exercising, running. So only you really know, and it changes day by day. <clears throat> so no one can really tell you the answer to that, but you can tune into yourself and in your intuition. And on April 23rd, it's a great time to celebrate your partnerships and acknowledge your partnerships and maybe do something to celebrate like going out, but maybe you want to stay in and kind of ground all that energy. You know what's best for you. Two more significant transits for everyone to talk about this month. And there's the Wednesday, April 24th, Venus moves into Aries. Ooh la la. Venus, a sign of love, beauty, com and com uh, not commitment, <laughs> necessarily. Uh, it can represent the wife for a, hus for a male, for a heterosexual male, it can represent the wife. But with Aries, there is not so much that commitment energy, there's more of the passionate energy like let's go let's start this thing let's be romantic let's begin let's let's explore and it's a dynamic energy it's there's an assertive approach to relationships and social interactions where uh, you can be very charming people can be very charming to you very flirty flirtatious and just know what you want and go for it 
and pursue your desires. And it can be very fun and exciting. <clears throat> and when Jupiter goes into Taurus in early May, May 1st, just a little bit after this, that brings more of the sort of uh, grounded practical approach to things, where now you can think longer term about this. But yeah, it's an exciting energy, and it's good to play with that, dance with it, maybe create art as well. It's a favorable time for initiating new connections and partnerships, and especially creative partnerships or partnerships based on desire. Maybe going dancing with somebody, creating art, creating jewelry, getting all dressed up, looking nice. Great influence on personal charm and attractiveness. And if there's something you want to do to in, like improve your skin or go tanning or get some nice jewelry or makeup or manicure, pedicure, this is a fun time to enjoy the luxuries of life. Venus is all about enjoying the luxuries of life and nature. Going out on an adventure into nature is very favorable, like going hiking, going out into some beautiful garden, starting a garden, all great things. Potential for impulsiveness or conflicts in romantic matters as well. That impulsivity, the warrior energy with the love energy can create passion and like a lot of romance and sex and things like this, but also could be anger, frustration coming out at the partner. And of course, in relationships, nobody can push your buttons quite like your intimate partners or also, I'd say, your family of origin because there's so much wrapped up in that connection. It's not just romance, it's not just sexuality, or it's not just family. It's your desires, your your relationship, your companion. There's so much layers to it. So this could come out as conflict, impulsivity, anger, frustration in relationship, but that can be directed inward of looking at the internal work around this through personal growth work, support groups, therapy, things like this. The Mars energy must be expressed in some form. It's like a warrior ready for battle and that can be directed in so many ways. It could be like a spiritual warrior, it can be a defender of a partner, of a family, it can be uh, passionate about your art and like dedicated and putting in the time to create your art it can be like, uh, like going through your garden and like getting every single weed from the root out it's like this determined hunting energy of when they root up all these weeds in the garden and it's a little bit competitive and aggressive and assertive so that can be used for whatever you choose right it, it doesn't have to be good or bad so it's it's an energy that's present throughout April 24th for a few weeks. Then April 25th, Mercury moves direct in Pisces. So now we've finished the retrograde portion, but we're still in the sort of shadow portion of Mercury where it's gone forward, then back, and now forward again over that same part of the sky in Pisces where issues that came up in May, or excuse me, in March are now starting to really move forward and bring the fruits of that effort in March of what you were envisioning, what you wanted to create, what you were talking about, now it starts to come into reality as we move from Pisces in the water into Aries, the fire, through the Gandanta zone of untying a knot into early May, where we will untie this knot, this block, this karmic spiritual knot of where our thinking was blocked, where our vision, our dream was blocked, now we can move forward starting April 25th, but really into early May. So there's clarity and forward momentum in your communication and your decision-making. It's a time for implementing your plans and ideas that you developed during the retrograde as you went back over things. Oh, what do I want to go back to? What do I want to go deeper with? What do I want to revisit, revise? That's why I'm offering this Deep in Your Practice workshop on Saturday, April 6th, during the retrograde time, to go back over and go deeper into things like yoga and Ayurveda that many of you listening have practiced to some degree, but you want to go deeper into the roots of it. So any topic you want to go deeper into throughout April is really favorable, any, especially any spiritual topic. And now you can sort of create a clarity of, okay, this is what's important. These are the plans. This is the direction I want to go. Now when you get through the Gandanta, early May, now you're moving forward and excited and taking action on those visions and dreams. 
It's a positive energy for clear thinking and effective expression now that it's direct. It's still in Pisces, so it's going to be more in this realm of imagination, vision, but there's more clarity and less of this needing to go back over, revisit, rehash things. And there's a potential for lingering effects of the retrograde requiring caution in your communication. So there may be, again, some things that you reviewed, went over, sent out, you thought you were done. You still got to address them in this sort of shadow period and then Gandanza period from April to mid-May. And after that, then it's all systems go forward for Mercury, but we will have some other retrogrades coming up in the middle of the year. So those are the eight significant transits for everyone. Now we're going to move on to talking about sign by sign. So five significant points for each sign. And you want to listen for your rising and moon. And I recommend you listen for people close to you as well. Family member, daughter, son, partner, friends, people close to you. Because then you start to understand what's going on in their lives. And this is where astrology becomes super interesting. You see the patterns playing out. Because you're going to go through them too. Like we all go through these transits in some form over time. Like you might not have a 12th house transit now, but you might know somebody who is, and you might understand a little more of what they're going through. So first of all, Aries rising and moon. One of the big themes for April 2024 is your personal power. So you may feel a surge of confidence and assertiveness as you assert your identity with all this stellium in the first house that's happening. Number two is a spiritual exploration. You might find a great time to, over this month to dive deep into introspective practices, inner growth, facing subconscious patterns with the, also a stellium in the 12th house. And you may need to let go of some things. And spirituality often is not about attaining, acquiring, adding. It's often about letting go and surrender and trust and finding what really matters to you. Act with caution throughout this month. You want to take some bold steps forward, but remain wary of any hidden obstacles or enemies. There may be some unforeseen challenges that you might not be thinking fully clearly at this time, but you just want to go ahead and, and do it. So proceed with caution in the same way a warrior would go into battle with their senses fully sharpened, like listening very attentively to their surroundings noticing the quality of air, feeling the sensation on your skin, trusting your spidey senses. So yeah, move forward, take action, be bold, and be very present, be very attuned to the energy around you, not distracted. Like my yoga teacher would say, like when you're driving, drive. So don't listen to something in the drive. You know, if you do, fine, you know, I, I understand, I like to learn too, but sometimes what you really need is just to be present and when you're walking, walk. When you're eating, eat. When you're sleeping, sleep. And you be fully present to the activity that you're doing. The Aries energy can be like, what's next? What else? What else? And uh, sometimes lose that intuitive connection to the surroundings. It's a time of self-discovery, number four. So embrace this time for self-discovery and spiritual evolution. You can learn a lot about yourself and it can be a huge personal breakthrough this month with that stellium in the first house, sun moving there. It's, it's exciting stuff. It's really energizing, really powerful transits throughout April for Aries, ascendants, and moons. And there's a balancing act here <clears throat> where you want to find an equilibrium between your assertiveness and your introspection for holistic growth. Because you have first and twelfth house activated. That's the self and the loss of the self. So there's an interesting place uh, placements here where... Yeah, you want to be bold and assertive and move towards what you want. And that's more self-focused. And then there's the introspective stuff, which is, it can be self-focused, but it ideally is a sense of a loss of self, of a loss of, uh, a letting go of attachment to ego and identity and me, 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 my, my, mine. But there's also this part, it's like, yeah, but me, 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 my, my, mine. <laughs> and I want to have nice things and be in my path and do my things. But then there's like, oh, yeah, but you got to let this go. You got you to gotta also be connected to the spirituality. So interesting balance there to find for yourself this month. For Taurus, rising and moon, this is a month for spiritual reflection. The stellium in your 12th house brings this great exploration of deeper spiritual beliefs and values. And this includes surrender, letting go, non-attachment. 
aparigraha, non-grasping, one of the main teachings of yoga philosophy. There may be some unexpected gains, pretty cool and exciting. You seize opportunities for growth and advancement through your social connections as you have a stellium in your 11th house this month. And this can bring about just through your connections, through talking to friends, going to some gathering, oh, you should meet this person or you should work on this project with them or talk about them with this cause. And this could lead to huge opportunities, not just this month, but maybe further down the road as well as the, the 11th house is about these long-term connections and relationships as well and the sort of ripple effect of who you know and who knows you. There's inner journey of engaging in introspection and spiritual practices for your own personal evolution. So this is a great month to do meditative practices, yoga, uh, yoga nidra, yin, restorative, with the 12th house activated so much, these surrender kind of practices where you can go internal and have deep insights. There's a great potential for collective collaboration where you leverage your social networks and groups for mutual benefit thinking win-win, how can you help them? How could they help you? And even sometimes I think it's even more helpful to think of just how can you help others and, and trust that you will always be provided for and have what you need. And if you focus on helping others, that's really all you need to do. And you will always be provided for. So with this month, it's a great time to find opportunities to help others. And then the fifth theme for Taurus rising and moon in April 2024 is grounding amidst change. And you want to maintain stability and inner peace amidst external transformations. With this 12th house stuff, there can be some big changes and necessary letting go of things. And that could be ego death, where you <coughs> feel very much like you know who you are and what you want. But now you're starting to question that. It's like, is that really who you are and really what you want? Is this really aligned anymore? And only you can really answer those questions, but you may need to physically release some things, emotionally have some big releases. And through that, it can be a little ungrounding. And when you don't have the things that you had before, it can be unclear of what, what ground you really stand on. So what can you come back to that is true? And this might be a place in nature, it might be a place in your home, it might be a meditation cushion. If there's a sort of power spot you can come back to throughout this month, that's really favorable as well. Gemini rising and moon signs. One of the big themes for April is a career drive where you have more uh, desire and will and energy to pursue your professional goals and have greater communication and networking with people in your work and maybe collaborating more with people in your work as you have a stellium in the 10th house, which indicates a lot of potential in career and finding a deeper level of your purpose and growing in your career and purpose. There's a lot of social momentum here where you may want to build alliances and collaborations for success in career endeavors with the 11th house activated as well. And you may want to find maybe people you can connect with, create projects with, interview with, and in some way you just work together where you can build and create and create a vision together. There may be great potential for gains and income through this as well. And you may find yourself more ambitious in your communication and assertive in the public sphere where you're more directive, like this is what I wanna say, this is how I wanna say it. And the Gemini energy is sometimes vacillating, oscillating, up, I could do this, I could do that, I could say it this way or that way. You may find throughout April you're more direct and clear, like knowing what you want to say and how you want to say it. Great networking opportunities where you could capitalize on social connections for career advancements. Gemini is a very business-oriented mind, especially when it's the moon here. <clears throat> and you can find ways of, oh, I could help this person, they could help me, we could collaborate this way. Uh, very business-oriented approach to everything, of like how can this be filtered through into helping and and growing and being in your purpose. And there's a goal-oriented mindset where you want to focus on tangible objectives while navigating social dynamics and focus on ways that you can have a clear goal and target and move towards that goal. And less of the sort of vacillating of what about this, what about that, which is always present to a degree for Gemini. But this month you may find yourself more 
clear and even maybe even fixated on a goal with the all the energies happening this month so you may find yourself more inspired to move towards a particular goal and have the wit and charm to communicate about it and say what needs to be said to make progress to find people to help you with it to collaborate with those people and it can be really wonderful and end up meeting amazing people and getting amazing new connections for cancer rising and moon there could be some major career shifts happening where you might experience some changes or developments in your professional path where you feel like there needs to be a new sense of expression in your career a new sense of self coming through in your career you may find a new philosophical alignment where you want to align your career choices with your values and your beliefs and your spiritual path. And you may feel that things have been a little out of alignment and now you want to realign. You may find more stability for yourself through emotional security. And this may be like emotional support animal, like a dog, uh, or through a pet, or through a close friend. So this is a great month to really lean on your emotional support systems while you also explore maybe these new ways of expressing yourself in your career. There may even be some travel this month where you want to go somewhere for a spiritual cause like a retreat or some sort of spiritual place to go more into that path <coughs> and find new insights there where you can find a deeper sense of expression and truth for yourself. And having support, emotional support, is really helpful. You may seek wisdom and meaning in your career pursuits for fulfillment and go on this path of like learning and growth in your career where you're looking for support, you're looking for guidance, and you can find a mentor, a teacher, or a spiritual path that gives you new perspective in your career and what it means for you to like be doing work that you love and that matters to you. There's a lot of room to explore in this area. And you will be balancing your career ambitions with your spiritual growth and philosophical growth. And if you think about like people who are just philosophers back in the day, they just kind of talk about ideas, it's very heady, very intellectual, but in the career path, it's very much doing the work and taking action. So there's a balance here of kind of balancing out, thinking about things, dreaming about, visioning, idealizing things and also putting those into practical action and not just being in the thought of it but also being in the act of it and the creation of it so a great time to be bringing your ideas and your unique perspective of the world into your vision and your work where now you are getting to feel more in purpose more like you're really doing something that matters to you and aligns with you for Leo rising and moon, there's a bit of a spiritual quest through April of exploring different philosophies and going on spiritual journeys. Maybe you are deepening your spiritual path and you want to learn more about a specific topic and maybe go deeper into texts, maybe go traveling, being involved in spiritual communities. There's a bit of a uh, self-discovery here, a kind of a almost like a vision quest even that it's furthest extent where you may feel this desire to like go out in nature and and just kind of reassess things a bit now there's intimate dynamics here with the eighth house activated where you might need to navigate some power struggles or hidden agendas in your close relationships or like in-law relationships there may be some deeper and deepening of your sensuality and sexuality with your partner maybe exploring things like tantra or like Taoist sexual practices can be really favorable this month. And there may be some unforeseen or hidden issues with shared resources and finances. Like maybe you share a bank account and there's some sort of things happening there that were unclear. And there's a level of like uh, exploring a mystery here, of uncovering what's really going on there in this realm of the eighth house of your spiritual path, shared resources, in-laws, and your uh, personal growth path as well. There may be some things you uncover there where it's like a new layer of personal growth potential for you that's deeper and less superficial. You may want to delve deeper into truths and philosophical concepts for your personal growth at this time. This could be reading spiritual texts, 
uh, there could be a lot of interest in uncovering hidden things, like into conspiracies or mysteries or occult teachings, where you have to dive deep and it's under the surface and it's not going to be the first page of Google results or things that you've already known, but there could be a lot of curiosity to really go deep into things like astrology or yoga are also very favorable. Any sort of uh, hidden, occult means hidden teachings. And this is a great time to go deeper into those and explore what's there. Like, what's something you overlooked before, or didn't find this before? And, uh, it could be endless also. It could be like a rabbit hole that you just kind of get sucked into. So be aware of that as well. It's a great month for self-expression, always for Leos, but especially now uh, as there's some uh, influence here of the fifth house of uh, expressing creative passions, romantic desires authentically, where you may feel like more able to express yourself, more inspired, more romantic. And there can be some transformative relationships here where you're embracing intimacy and vulnerability for profound transformations and being more intimate and vulnerable. The eighth house is all about vulnerability as well. And you may want to share on a deeper level with somebody close to you, a partner, a friend, and that can bring about huge insights. Or you may want to go deeper into a personal growth path, and that can bring about huge revelations and insights as well. For Virgo rising and moon in April, there could be some major relationship transformations here. You might want to navigate these changes in your intimate connections and your shared resources with a lot of intention and reverence for the depth of potential here, where you can have deeply healing, profound, transformative connections with others throughout April. And this also could mean uh, like deep, profound transformation in your relationship to self and the resources that you are sharing with others or have access to through others and anything to do with spirituality personal growth as well your personal growth path it can be a huge month of transformation and really exciting virgo loves this sort of depth of things and the deep research so you may find yourself going really deep and intimate with somebody close to you or deep and intimate into a topic you're interested in great month for research and deep study there are some partnership dynamics here that need to be navigated of being more open in your communication and understanding of your partnerships as the seventh house is activated, where and now you may find yourself potentially entering a relationship or having more communication with a partner, more of this collaborative kind of partnership energy, maybe even partnering with others in your work and finding more collaboration in your work projects. It's a good time to cultivate trust and vulnerability amidst these relationship transitions and deep growth, finding your inner resilience. And Virgos will always find a way through and out of any challenge or situation. And this is a great time to cultivate this trust in yourself to navigate anything that life brings you, any ups and downs. And be vulnerable with yourself and be authentic with yourself and the people close to you and it can bring about huge transformation this month. It can be a little uncomfortable because it's <clears throat> Virgo sometimes likes to be more in the analysis of things and the, the sort of intellectual mercury, the, the buddhi quality of analyzing things. But and when you're vulnerable, you can't really analyze it. You're just feeling, you're just expressing, you're just sharing. And that can feel scary and uncertain and uh, but it can bring about huge growth this month. Uh, you think of the image of Virgo as the woman, a healer, bringing Ayurvedic herbs to heal. And a healer, a provider of a service, is not the one receiving the service. So Virgos can be more comfortable in this provider, healer, or giver role. But this month can be an opportunity to receive support, receive healing sessions, be vulnerable, share with others, and let other people in on a deeper level. Health consciousness, this is a month to pay attention to physical and emotional well-being amidst these personal transformations. Saturn has been over the sixth house for a long time now, will continue throughout all of 2024, bringing this sense of some restrictions and discipline needed around health. This can be self-imposed through being very disciplined in your spiritual practice and your health regime, working harder, or it can be externally imposed and kind of happen to you where you get really sick, 
you get sidelined, you get some sort of injury where you now you have to slow down and rest. The energy is present one way or another. The Saturn disciplinary energy is going to express. And we always get to choose some degree of how it expresses. So being more health conscious, more intentional, more even a little more strict without being rigid. Uh, Virgo could be rigid and controlling OCD even about health and, and diet and exercise, but being intentional, being structured with it. And there is collaborative growth here, working together with partners to overcome challenges and foster deeper connections with the seventh house activation, the eighth house of shared resources, great month to collaborate with others, receive support, give support, work together. For Libra rising and moon, there's a big emphasis on partnership. Wonderful for Libras, great, and the seventh house activated. But the sun is here where it's considered debilitated. So not the best in a sense, uh, but it's in the Aries where it's exalted. So it's kind of this uh, <laughs> balancing act, these scales of it's equally good and challenging where it's a good time to prioritize harmony and cooperation in your personal and professional relationships and seek ways uh, to be win-win, to collaborate, to bring out the team strengths. Libras do really well on collaborative teams where you're finding everybody's voice and everybody's opportunity to bring out their strengths. And this month, you can find ways to do that in your intimate relationship, but also any partnerships, dating professional relationships where you want to bring out other people's gifts and skills and find more of this synergy where one plus one equals more than the sum of its parts. There's a work-life balance here where you want to maintain equilibrium between work commitments and personal connections. The sixth house is your day-to-day -day life, which includes typically your day-to-day -day work and your daily work routine, which often is a big part of people's day-to-day -day life. So you want to find this balance between work and personal life. And of course, Libra is always, the whole life story is about finding balance. But now also it's like <clears throat> not sacrificing your health for the work where you don't want to you know, stay late at work because they really need you, but then you end up not sleeping and you end up not eating well and you end up getting sick. And then you can't be at work anyway. You can't do your responsibilities anyway because now you're sick. So finding this balance between the two is very important this month and taking care of self, taking care of others, which is always the, the karma of the Libra rising in moons. There's relationship harmony here of navigating challenges and partnerships with clear communication and compromise where you can really find a mutuality and understanding and come to a common understanding and agreement. Health awareness, focus on maintaining your physical and mental well-being amidst these relationship dynamics, not losing yourself or being codependent, uh, but finding interdependence, which again is a lifelong karma a lesson for Libras. And then there's social engagement where you can engage in social activities for mutual support and growth, great for connections with others, socializing, sharing resources, and finding ways to collect, connect and collaborate are, are great this month as well. Uh, time with friends, very favorable. Time with family. For Scorpio rising and moon, April 2024 is a health focus. Time to attend to your physical and mental well-being through improved daily routines. Meditation, yoga, self-care, dhinacharya, the Ayurvedic morning routine, evening routine, seasonal routines. As we just went through the shift of the seasons, the, there's a saying in Ayurveda, all diseases begin in the transition of the seasons where you may need to attend to some accumulation of a dosha from the past season, depending where what climate you live in. But uh, I will also talk about this, of course, in the free workshop on Saturday, April 6th. So if you want to go deeper into Ayurveda, I'll be sharing that there. But it's a great time this month to go deeper into Ayurveda, whether it's with me or not. And this means knowing your dosha, knowing what brings you balance, what foods bring you out of balance. And it is a never-ending responsibility really as a human to be aware of these things and even I've been doing it a long time and there's still always nuances to it of you can't just uh, set your diet once and for life and you're set you got to adjust to the seasons the climates the location you're in the the shifts of the lifestyle that you have and it's a continual work in progress which is kind of fun for Scorpios where it's like always dynamic and changing 
And there's creative exploration here with the fifth house activated. You can express your creativity and passion in your work and your personal pursuits where you may find yourself more expressed, more able to create content or create work in some way, more passionate about your work, more creative. It's a time for tapping into your inner resilience to overcome challenges in your creative endeavors where you may find yourself more powerful, more inspired, more creative, and intimate expression, where you might deepen your connections and intimate relationships through trust and vulnerability. And this is a great time to be more authentic, be more vulnerable in your relationships, open up, go deeper. There's always room for more depth with Scorpios, and this is a great time to go deeper into your relationships, into your creative expression, into your health routines and a great month for personal transformation where you can embrace your inner growth and self-discovery amidst these creative explorations, these intimate explorations of being more vulnerable, being more authentic. And you may find that through this, your creativity increases, your sense of self-awareness increases, your self-understanding. There could be a lot of personal growth this month, which is in some ways common for Scorpios, very frequent. But this month in particular, through your creative expression and through your health routines, you may find a lot of self-awareness and new growth. For Sagittarius rising and moon, this is a great month in April to explore your creative pursuits and explore your creative talents and passions for personal fulfillment. If there is a project you want to pick back up or a new task you want to get back into or some way that maybe you thought about starting an Instagram or a podcast or a YouTube or uh, writing a book, great month for exploring your creative expression if you're especially people in entertainment uh, or media great month for expressing yourself through your creative work this also may come through as deeper connection with your children if you have them or children in your life where you are more playful more creative and these kids can actually bring in more inspiration to you because you know they have such a unique perspective and a fresh perspective on life that they could be very inspiring to so spend more time with your kids or children in your life. This is a time where you may want to seek more emotional security and stability within your family and home environment. And this can be a place where you can kind of get away and reconnect to your spiritual purpose. And you want to seek this sense of this is a safe place for you to go into your personal growth and your spirituality and and deepening that connection with your spiritual place in the home. If you don't have an altar in the home, this is a great month to make one or refresh your altar. There can be a lot of philosophical growth, of course, where you expand your horizons through spiritual exploration and higher learning. This is always the case for Sagittarius, of course, but it's a great time to maybe go deeper into a spiritual path, maybe even higher education if there's an advanced degree you want to explore. It's a month of joyful expression where you can find joy and self-expression and creative endeavors and personal growth. It can be a lot of fun. It can be a really fun, exciting, interesting month. And inner happiness is another big theme where you want to cultivate a sense of inner peace and contentment amidst the personal and familial transitions that may be happening this month. There's a potential for changing home in this month or needing to address something with the home or letting go of something with the home. And that can bring a sense of external change but it's a great month to cultivate your inner peace, inner happiness through whatever makes you happy, <laughs> like meditation, spiritual practice. could be just like going for a drive, going on some sort of spontaneous adventure or date, or just doing things, whatever lights you up, whatever brings you fun and excitement and joy, to really, like really connect to that this month, like on a deeper level. Like, what do you really like to do? Not what you think you should do or what people say you should do, but really, what really lights you up? For Capricorn rising and moon, there's a focus on family this month where you have the fourth house activated and you prioritize harmony and stability within the family unit. And there's a potential with this as well for a change of home or uh, some sort of uh, revision or adjustment to the home where you might need to find a way to make your home feel more enlivening, inspiring, and energizing for you. And like it feels like you're yourself. You can be yourself in your home. This is very important this month. And then might need to, you might need to make some changes there. And also you want to clarify and clean up any communication misunderstandings or especially in family dynamics and with friends and siblings. 
where you may find yourself needing to let go of something you were holding on to in that communication, that connection, to free up energy there. Anywhere that we are holding on to things and getting stuck in like a stick in the mud, energy is now blocked. So with this month, there's a potential to free up energy in the home and in your communication with others. And maybe there's a skill that you were learning in the past that you want to go deeper into now and learn that skill in more depth. This is a great month to do that. It's a month to explore your career stability and ground your career ambitions into practical communication and networking. The third house has to do with your networking and communication and your skill development, which directly correlates to your work. So this is a month where you might want to go deeper into learning skills that can advance your career, particularly skills around marketing and business, sales and communication, where the third house represents those things. And you could do well to learn new skills here and particularly in ways that get to use your imagination and your vision of reality. And if you're in like a spiritual work, this is very favorable for learning business skills to apply to your spiritual work. But also a good time for letting go of maybe any sort of control or gripping where you're trying too hard and struggling with expressing yourself or learning a skill or working in sales or marketing and not being so attached to it. And that could free up your energy to now do it in a more effective way. This is a month to build a solid foundation for your personal growth and your career success with the fourth house, the home being so activated and Aries being there, the sense of self and the home where this is a month where you may want to really have a space to feel like yourself in the home. This might mean walking around naked, singing music, dancing in the mirror, whatever, uh, just being yourself, being loud, obnoxious, uh, not having to answer to someone or having a space in your home that's just for you or a, like a power spot in the home. I mentioned earlier, it's, it's great to have this sense of a place in your home where you, it's just for you. You go to recharge, you feel centered, you feel connected. And this feels like a solid foundation with the changes that can be happening of your career, of maybe even your home changing, but you have this sense of like inner stability and security. And then Finally, for Capricorns, this is a month to have practical pursuits and take practical steps to achieve your long-term goals amidst family and career responsibilities. So always, always having your eye on the prize for Capricorn is very favorable, and you will figure out a way to get there, and you will make it in the long term. You think of the symbol of a goat, and goats really like to climb to high spots on the sides of mountains. If you haven't seen this, it's pretty incredible mountain goats they can just get up to it just seems like how did they ever get there and why <laughs> but they like to be up high they feel more safe and secure and they get this big picture perspective and they figure out a way to get there and they figure out a way to get down so capricorns have this ability to do that they like to get the big picture and they can figure out a way to get up to the peak and how to get back down safely so long-term vision long-term planning strategy goals are very favorable here but not being too rigid and controlling and fixated on that because then you can maybe lose sight of the things immediately in front of you and make some significant mistakes then. But generally, you're going to find a way. You're going to pursue it and get to the goal and achieve the goal. So this is a great month to reconnect to that and clarify that. Aquarius rising and moon. One of the big themes for April is communication mastery, where you want to utilize effective communication skills for material gains. You may find yourself improving like your social media presentation, the way you connect with others. You might want to learn some new skills in business and communication, like nonviolent communication or things like this. Great month to be learning these kind of things and finding your sense of expression through them. It's a month for financial growth, where you can build wealth and resources through your intellectual pursuits and networking with others, and also maybe even through shared resources with family members or uh, family assets. A great month for focusing on what you want to create in sense of building wealth and long-term investments and things like this that you establish and, and hold on to and, and build and potentially familial wealth. There's social connectivity this month where you can engage with like-minded individuals for mutual support and growth, and you may find yourself more social, more socializing. A great practical approach to things and practical wisdom you can apply and intellect to achieve financial and personal 
goals and objectives this month where it's a great month to just think step by step, think strategic. Saturn rules Aquarius. Aquarius is a very independent individual, but Saturn very structured and practical. So if you have a practical approach and step by step plan, you can have some huge results this month financially and personally and have like major personal growth. Self-expression is another big theme where you might want to express yourself more and be more authentic and express your individualities and your values in your communication and your social interactions. So if you've been like working a certain way or doing something and it doesn't feel really true to you anymore, it's going to be hard to just like keep doing that and trudging along. It's the time to kind of reassess things like are you really being authentic? Are you really saying what you feel? Is the thing you're offering really still in alignment with who you are? Is the work you're doing still in alignment with what's true for you now? And likely you're going to need to revise these things and reassess them. Are, are you living in alignment with your values? Is, is there something that needs to change, re, be renegotiated, adjusted, your lifestyle, your habits, your, your community, your uh, people you work with? It's a great time to really get, again, connect to what's really true for you now. And are you being authentic to that? And be more authentic. For Pisces rising and moon, this is a self-worth exploration this month where you might want to reflect on your personal values and your self-worth. And this can lead to major inner growth with the second house activated. And you may find that there are some things with your family and your family of origin you need to go back to. And like through therapy or meditative or spiritual work or personal growth work, explore what's there. And you may find some like deeper truth of, oh, this is what you really value. This is who you really are. This is where you find your sense of self-worth and empowerment, which is always a bit of a moving target for Pisces. But there's deeper layers to uncover this month in going through that familial family of origin kind of work. Another theme is identity assertion, where this is a common theme for Pisces. Of the, the, the symbol of the fish swimming in opposite directions I can go this way or that way. I want to go with the flow. It's going here. It's going there. Asserting your individuality, finding your sense of self and feeling confident in who you are and what you are could become clearer this month with the first house activated where now you're like more confident, more self-assured, more assertive, more directive, like going in this direction. Of this is who you are. This is what you want. And it can feel more inspiring. And you feel more confident this month to now take action to things that improve your sense of self and your confidence. They can find more, you can find more financial stability this month by taking practical steps to enhance your financial security and stability. This could include like working with a teacher who's going to help you and learn about finances. With Aries being in your second house, you find a sense of independence when you can individuate from the family and requirement and dependence on family or family resources or others' resources and find your own sense of empowerment through your own wealth accumulation or resources. Depending on the chart, there may be other factors, of course, but this month you may find very inspiring to learn about personal finance, investments, wealth management, and creating a sense of financial security for yourself. Number four, there are spiritual insights and deep things to tap into this month. You can tap into your intuition and spirituality for guidance amidst all these transitions. And you always have this, this deep intuition and spirituality so that's like a major strength for you to lean into as you go into these sometimes they're less comfortable areas of strong sense of identity and self, strong sense of finance and wealth and accumulation. Generally for Pisces, these can be a little more uncomfortable, but in the intuition and the imagination and the spirituality, you can feel more comfortable and more in your strengths. And this month you can bring those things together. And finally, <clears throat> grounded growth is the last big theme for Pisces this month. You can ground your dreams and aspirations into practical action for tangible results. So this means taking your intuition and vision out of the ethers into the earth, earthers. So ethers to earth, where you can take these visions and ground them into practical steps and actions. And it can be really helpful to partner with somebody who can do this. So maybe somebody who's more of the earth energy that's close to you, like a Virgo, the opposite sign, where you can bring them more intuition, imagination, and vision. They can bring you more practical steps and actions and plans and strategies. But for you yourself, you can connect to this earth energy through physically grounding, feet on the earth or feet on the ground, 
and taking practical steps and having a plan of, okay, you want to uh, follow and, and, and maybe follow this per person or this teaching about personal finance and then just follow the steps. And you may find that it's difficult to just rigidly follow that, and that's okay. This may be some, where somebody can help uh, bring that out in you. But for yourself, you may find it beneficial to have a plan and direction, and then from there you can go with the flow. So maybe it's like a seven-step plan to improve, improve your finances, and you get to step two, and you're like, oh, it doesn't feel aligned. What feels more aligned is this. And then trust that intuition because you have this great ability to go with the flow and intuition better than many others. So trust that and use that strength. So that's our look at the big transits of April 2024. If you found this helpful, take a moment to leave a review in Apple Podcasts, share it with a friend, and you can schedule a reading at quietmindastrology.com if you want to go deeper with this one-on-one. -on -one. And if you want to go deeper into yoga and spiritual practices, check out the Deepen Your Practice free live workshop on Saturday... I think it's January 6th. I said a lot of dates today, but it's coming up soon. And if you can't make it, you get the replay. Quietmind.yoga slash deepen your practice is where you can sign up right now. And if you miss it, you can get the replay later. Uh, it'll be up for a limited time. And that's where you can go deeper into yoga and Ayurvedic practices of working with energy, intuition, awareness, turning on the lights of awareness in your body, mind, and spirit. So you have more intentionality, control, and influence over how these energies of astrology play out and then how the energy of your health, wellness, wealth, relationships, purpose, all the major areas of life play out for you through this self-awareness practice of yoga and Ayurveda, the sister sciences of Jyotish. So thanks for listening and look forward to sharing more with you next time on the Quiet Mind Astrology Podcast.